This is part two in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair and restore a Krememco System 3. For anyone that's not familiar with this system, it's a, a very old vintage computer system. It was made by a company called Krememco and was uh, initially a Z80 based computer system, especially an NS100 uh, backplane system and uh, later a dual processor 68,000 based card was available for it so it would run uh, a dual card that had both the Z80 and the 68,000 processor. The Z80 was there really just for backward compatibility it wasn't really a true uh, dual processor system but it was a very flexible system it had 21 expansion slots and because of that it needed a very beefy power supply. The concept behind the design of the supply is extremely simple. It's a linear supply, so it's not a switching supply. And the approach that the designers took was to put in um, massive capacitors for the uh, DC rails. And the reason for doing that is it means you can have a much lower DC rail voltage. You don't need the same overhead that you do um, if you have smaller smoothing capacitors because the ripple is less and the dips and um, voltage variations are much less and that in theory means it generates less heat and so should, should in theory be more reliable. So what I did in the first video was to strip this out. I did some basic uh, disassembly of the system and I've now got the power supply on the bench as you can see. I've done a bit of repair on here. It's been hacked about a little bit. Um, there's been some extra connections put in here uh, one point I made when I was um, posting the videos on the MDS systems was that the AC motor on the floppy drive ran all the time which was a bit of a pain because it tended to wear out the floppy disk drive. These systems were designed for commercial use so rather than running the same way even though they use the same floppy drives uh, what they did is enable the um, power supply um, this is the floppy drive AC supply um, to be switched on and off so there's a relay tucked uh, down in here that is used to essentially switch off this entire supply now initially it was there to allow the voltage to come up um, before it switched in the main supply and that in turn meant that the startup was much more controlled uh, but also it allows the key on the front of the unit to be used to turn the main power supply off. Now of course you can't pass these rails through the on off switch partly because it would require huge wires to be run up to the front panel and back um, but also it would destroy the switch after a few operations. I believe this supply can um, provide up to around 15 amps at 8 volts and up to about 8 amps for the plus or minus supplies. So what we have here is the plus or minus supplies and a raw uh, 8 volt supply. There's no regulation on this part of the system. These are just the raw supplies and these supplies are fed through to this card. This is the regulator card for the uh, floppy drives and that in turn goes through to the controls on the front of the uh, computer system itself. So a slight complication. I'll show you the schematic but uh, it probably won't help much. This is the clearest one I've got and um, it's very difficult to read, very poor quality. Um, but this assembly at the top here is on the front panel of the computer and there's a long ribbon cable that connects um, this assembly to this PCB and this PCB is this small PCB here. And then that goes through to the main chassis, which is uh, everything we can see here aside from the PCB. Um, one slight complication when testing this is um, the system won't come to life if you just plug it together like this and power it up. Nothing will happen because um, it will think it's been switched off. So what you need to do is put a diode between uh, pins 10 and 11 on this connector. And what it effectively does is it um, makes the unit think that the on off switch is in the on position uh, and then that will power up the rest of the uh, power supply uh, 
including energizing this relay which powers up the rest of the supply so that's why this uh, diode's tucked in here uh, also what I've done is I've bypassed the um, filter on the input um, this is the mains input uh, connector the other wants to retain this so I'm leaving it in place but I am going to bypass it while I'm testing these have got a habit of um, exploding these effectively are the same as the um, capacitors you have on uh, other computer systems that have a habit of destroying themselves and because this is a sealed box they tend to go off with quite a bang so um, when I'm testing old systems like this I disconnect this and bypass it um, you just need to be a bit careful if you retain these they as I say do have a habit of failing after a, uh, a certain period of time and uh, they do go off with quite a bang um, that's why it's uh, disconnected at the moment it's going straight through to my mains power block I've also replaced some of the uh, wiring some have been hacked about a bit um, I don't really know why but uh, it was a bit untidy so I've tidied this up given the supply really good clean and done some static testing with a multimeter to make sure it all buzzes out um, correctly and then set it up uh, as you can see in theory at least it should come to life like this I haven't tried powering this up yet I don't know when it was last powered up I don't know if these capacitors will withstand any voltage across them they measure okay um, but then again it's uh, you know the only real test is to put power across them and uh, the way I've got this set up is I have three of the Kunkin KP184 electronic loads I've got one on the minus supply rail, one on the plus supply rail and one on the uh, 8 volt uh, raw supply rail and they're currently all set to constant resistance of 100 ohms and in theory with this diode across here um, it should enable the supply to come to life once it gets up to a certain voltage and it will start off dead until this um, circuit comes to life and once we reach a certain threshold we should hear the relay click in and then we should see uh, voltages appearing on the Kunkin uh, loads. Apologies for any flickering on these units, um, no way to avoid that um, but hopefully you can still see them. I don't know the exact specification for this supply but I'm going to test it up to 12 amps for the 8 volt uh, rail and up to 5 amps for the 2 plus or minus um, supply rails and the reason for selecting that is I can measure the diameter of the wire on these uh, two rails and they're 2.2 millimeter wires and that should give us about 8 amps and um, looking at the specification for the support of the cards in the electronics rack we should be able to supply at least 12 amps from the uh, raw DC supply I suspect it will go higher than that but I'm only going to test it up to uh, 12 amps so the next thing to do is get this powered up I've got it fed through the uh, bench supply transformer so I'll start with this turn right down when I first power this up nothing should really happen we shouldn't really see any supplies this should be off um, but this um, smaller board should start to uh, monitor the voltage as it rises and at a certain point it should power up the rest of the supply so we'll power this up if I see a sudden sharp rise in the uh, current drawn then of course I'll switch it off uh, or the cutout on the uh, auto transformer should also power it off before I start increasing the voltage just a quick note if you do work on machines like this this machine was designed in America so it is really a 110 volt machine throughout although it says 220 volts on here this is just by virtue of this big transformer sitting here but it's been used as a kind of auto transformer so we have uh, two 120 volt windings on the primary and because all the components such as the fan and the floppy disk drive motor etc are all 120 volts then they're wired across one half or other of the uh, transformer so if you do work on these make sure you don't connect something like this across the full 240 volts or you'll you'll blow it to pieces it's only a 120 volt fan it's only a 120 volt floppy disk drive uh, and that's the way these are wired up so this is the uh, main supply for the floppy drive and you can see it's wired across one half of the uh, main transformer
Okay, so we'll start to increase the voltage on the auto transformer. I don't know how well you'll be able to see the current on, on this for some reason. It doesn't seem to come out of my camera very well. It's perfectly clear here in real life, but uh, the camera doesn't seem to like it. But um, I'll let you know what this is reading um, as we go. Uh, all three electronic loads are set to on, so they should start reading as soon as the supply kicks in. I don't know what voltage um, it will kick in or what will actually happen when it does that. Um, so I'll be ready to switch this off. As I say, this hasn't been powered up, I suspect, for a very long time, so um, all bets are off as to what it could do, but everything tests fine. I'll start to increase the voltage up to 30 volts. Uh, of course, in theory, it should work at 240 volts, um, but I'm suspecting it should come on much sooner than that. So up to 50 volts. So that's 70. 100 volts and nothing's on yet. Okay, it's just come on at 115 volts. Current's looking quite promising and on the electronic loads we're getting, we're still only at half the um, rated voltage so far of course, but uh, so far the fan hasn't started up. We're at 9.5 volts but they're the same, so that's looking quite promising and 4.3 volts, but they are holding fairly steady uh, no smoke, no strange noises or smells, so we'll continue to increase the input voltage. The fan is just starting to turn. So now at 150 volts, we're up to 12.8 volts on both of these and they are very close to each other. As I said, none of these are regulated so they'll go up fairly high. Okay, we're at 190 volts. Incidentally, I am looking at this through a thermal camera to keep an eye on, uh, in particular, the capacitors to make sure that they're not starting to heat up. And um, as you can see, they're looking fairly cold so far. The hot spots that we can see are the two resistors. They will tend to run hot, and they're only there to discharge the capacitors when the power's turned off. Um, but the rest of the system should run fairly cool the glows in the background are actually the electronic loads and not this supply. So it's looking promising so far. We'll keep increasing the mains voltage. And we're aiming for a target here of 240 volts. Okay, so around 240 volts. Everything's still looking fine. Nothing's getting hot. 20.8 volts on this side, 20.8 on this. I would say here that one of these is winding backwards because it is a minor supply, of course. And we're getting 10.6 volts on the raw 8 volt supply. So though it's, uh, say it's an 8 volt supply, it's a nominal 8 volts, it will obviously drop a great deal in the load. And the system expects a nominal 8 volts at uh, full power. What I'm going to do now just to uh, be safe is to turn it off and check for anything getting particularly hot. There is a tantalum capacitor tacked to the back of the board down here. Now I will be replacing that. They are notorious for failing. I'm also checking to make sure that things like these bridge rectifiers are very firmly bolted to the rear panel because otherwise they will overheat. So, okay, nothing's getting hot. Okay, so back on with the power, and it should be a kind of um, dual step startup. It will initially power up the small board, and after a short delay, um, the uh, relay should kick in. Okay, we're drawing exactly the same power we were before we turned it off, and the voltages are about the same. As I say, the electronic loads are set to constant resistance of 100 ohms each. So what I'm going to do now is adjust those to increase the current drawn from each, each of these. So we're drawing 0.2 amps from these two rails and I want to increase that now 
Okay, so we're now drawing one amp from this one. I'll do the same with this side. Okay, so we're drawing 20 watts from each of the two high voltage rails. I'll now increase the current on the low voltage supply. And we're now drawing one amp on that supply as well. So I'm going to leave this running like this for about an hour to make sure nothing overheats. And then I'll come back and I'll slowly start to increase the power that we're drawing and make sure that all the components survive and that uh, there's nothing uh, about to fail. Um, I'm particularly interested of course in the bridge rectifiers which do degrade over time and of course the capacitors. This type of capacitor is extremely reliable so there's no need to change these unless you suspect there's a fault with one. And uh, as I say the two on this board might be worth replacing as a matter of course. They're a different type and they can be a bit unreliable. Certainly the tantalum needs replacing. Um, but for now I just want to test this as it is and see if it all uh, behaves itself the way that it should. So I'll leave this going for a while and uh, in your time it will just be a few seconds. Okay it's been going for about an hour and uh, as you can see nothing is getting hot other than the resistors. The drink loads have of course warmed up quite a bit. They're not drawing much power but even so they still get fairly warm. The main transformer is getting very slightly warm but it's only heated by a couple of degrees and the uh, main smoothing cap is still cold. The heat sink on this board is heated up very slightly but again only a few degrees. So what I'm going to do now is increase the load still further. I'm going to take these two supplies up to 2 amps each and I'm going to take this supply up to 5 amps. Okay, so I've got these two now set to around 2 amps. In case you're wondering why I'm using constant resistance rather than constant current, I tend to find these loads are much better behaved in constant resistance rather than constant current. I'm trying to test the um, supplies. So what I'm trying to do here is put a kind of a fixed load on them. I don't want a load that's going to keep varying depending on what the supply is doing. So in other words, if the voltage on the supply changes, I want that to be reflected in what the load's doing. I don't want the load to start tracking up and down trying to keep the current the same. Okay, so we've got about two amps on the plus minus supply and nearly five amps on the low voltage supply. And you can see that the low voltage supply has not actually dropped very much, so it does seem to have uh, quite a good current handling capacity and uh, what I'm going to do now is leave it for another hour we'll come back and then I'll take it up to the full power that I intend to test these at and I'll leave that running for 24 hours and uh, on the assumption that nothing fails then uh, we can start looking at the rest of the machine so back in an hour and uh, see how the supplies surviving Okay, so it's been running at this load now for about an hour and a half and uh, still nothing's getting particularly hot. The resistors are still hot of course, but um, the capacitors are still cold. The transformers heated up a little bit, but uh, it's not too bad. The heat sink on the smaller board has got fairly warm. It's still only about uh, 25, 30 degrees. And the large capacitor uh, is also still uh, cold. It's not warming up at all. And the bridge rectifiers on the uh, back chassis have got slightly warm you can see that one's glowing there a little bit and that one's getting quite hot that's obviously the one for this side uh, but even so it's uh, it's only about 20 about 25 degrees so not bad at all and uh, of course it's bolted to the back panel which is a very thick piece of metal so it's got a, a huge uh, thermal mass to uh, drop uh, energy into Okay, so I'll now increase these. I want to go up to 5 amps for these two and uh, 10 amps for the lower voltage. Okay, so I've got 
the plus minus rail is now sitting at around 5 amps at 92 watts per side and now we'll take the low voltage rail up to 10 amps okay so the noise is the fan on the Kunkin cutting in it's uh, now drawing quite a lot of power so um, they will start getting fairly hot but um, the power supply seems fine the voltages are sitting very consistent they have dropped a little bit as it's heated up um, but that's to be expected as the rectifiers heat up they drop a bit more voltage and um, of course the wires themselves will heat up and get fairly warm uh, of course we're looking at these at the end of these long uh, test wires so the voltage at the actual supply end is much better than that would tend to indicate uh, so what I'll do now is I'll leave these sitting for 24 hours come back and make sure it's uh, not overheating I do need to um, test it now and again to make sure it's not going to fail I don't want to come back and just find out it has failed uh, so what I do is I tend to attach um, thermocouple alarms to the key points that will be the bridge rectifiers and the three large capacitors and that way if I do get something starting to overheat um, it will let me know uh, currently if you're interested it's drawing 1.63 amps from the mains just under 240 volts so it's a total of a little under 300 watts so it's uh, quite a, a significant amount of power that's going through this supply and of course being linear um, there is no uh, high efficiency as you're getting a switching supply so any energy drop is just giving out as heat okay so i'll leave that now until tomorrow and uh, then we'll come back finish off this video and hopefully this will survive and um, we won't have any failures okay it's the next day and as you can see the power supply is still going nothing's failed uh, all the voltages are still uh, what they should be they've risen very slightly but it's only because the mains voltage has, has risen a, a little bit it does vary in the area that i'm in over time and it's gone up by three or four volts which is why the voltage on the uh, Kumkin has risen these are as i say unregulated um, but nothing's failed nothing's getting particularly hot uh, the transformer's got sort of mildly warm and if we look at it through the thermal camera you'll see that the resistors are fairly hot as we'd expect both bridge rectifiers have got fairly warm so this one's up around so 26 degrees or so and the other one try and get it into shot it's uh, quite difficult to get it into shot while you can see it um, but the temperature is up around 45 degrees Forty five, forty six degrees, uh, and they're the hottest parts of the system apart from the resistors. Um, the fan motor is getting fairly warm, so it's a, it's a one twenty volt fan, but it's not getting particularly hot. It's just getting warm, and the heat sink on the smaller board, so that's this one, uh, is also getting fairly warm. Uh, it's not getting hot. It's not really providing much power at the moment, and um, the floppy drives don't draw that much power so that should be fine um, but certainly all the rest of it is still working there haven't been any failures uh, it's been running consistently at uh, 5 amps for each of the plus minus supplies and a little under 11 amps for the lower voltage supply so that's it for the initial testing of this um, can be fairly confident now that when I put this back in it's not going to cause any failures I'll just replace the tantalum cap uh, these two caps are not getting warm so I'm going to leave those and um, I will keep an eye on those as the testing progresses. So in the next video we'll take the cards out of the electronics box, clean up the main chassis and then we can reattach the power supply and make sure that the basic chassis is working fine before we start to uh, reinstall the electronic parts.